Hi everyone, welcome to another video. And in this video, we're going to be looking at the Caesar cipher problem in Ruby in the Odin project. So if you're following the Odin project and you've done the foundations, you're going to end up in the Ruby basics if you are taking the Ruby on Rails path. And once you've gotten through some basic stuff uh, in Ruby, like data types, variables, input output, conditionals, loops, arrays, hashes, methods, basic debugging and your enumerables and then dealing with nested collections then you're ready to start problem solving with what you've learned here and they throw you into four problems and these problems are fairly characteristic of your basic CSC kind of 100 problem solving uh, head scratches let's say and the first one that they throw you into is the Caesar cipher this is a pretty straightforward and simple program to write uh, what it's doing is it's taking in a string and a number that's a conversion factor. And all that's happening is each letter in the string is being moved forward or backwards by this conversion factor. So for example, what a string 5 becomes this output down here. So that's more or less an encrypted out output. And if you know the conversion factor, then it's easy to decrypt this code. And do note that things like exclamation marks and other things that are not letters like at symbols or pound signs, etc., they're going to get passed straight through. They're actually not going to get transformed at all. And a few other things to remember. You've got to remember how to convert a string into a number. So the ASCII code, for example. And don't forget to wrap from Z to A. So if you are applying a, a shift factor on X, and your shift factor is 5, then obviously once you get to Z, you've got to keep going, but it's going to restart at A. And don't forget to keep the same case. And the important thing here is that when you're converting strings into a number, uh, your range of numbers is much easier to handle if you're all in the same case, because lowercase letters have a different ASCII code than uppercase. All right, so let's take a look at mine. Uh, this one, yeah. This is a very long-winded way to solve this problem. And again, it was in the early days of me for Ruby. So what I like about this, though, is it just shows my problem solving or my, my logical progression. And I don't think it's a bad thing to showcase on here, especially if you are learning. Uh, you can see this. It's a way of doing it. It's not necessarily wrong. It's just not very efficient. And you could probably come up with a much more efficient way yourself. And I'll also show you a more efficient way afterwards. Uh, that I did come up with too. So all I have is a simple method cipher and the parameters are a string and a shift factor. So first off, looking at my comments here, I do define some empty arrays that are going to get used later on in this method. So I have an ordinal array and ordinals are just the number for the ASCII code for a letter. We have a cipher ordinal array and then a cipher array. array sorry. And then we have another array here where we're converting the strings string to down case and turning it into an array itself. So that's using the dot down case dot chars methods in Ruby. Next we loop over this string array and all we're doing here is pushing the value to a new array, order array, defined up here, the ordinal of each value in string array. So for example letter A is going to have value 97, letter B is going to have value 98 for lowercase versions of those letters. And once we have an array of ordinals, we can then apply the shift factor to it. But there's a couple things to remember here. So first off, if it is not a letter, if it's a pound sign, an at sign, an exclamation mark, what we want to do is actually push that to the final array or the final output, however you want to um, set this up. So that's what this is doing here. Again, a simple for loop to go through order array. And if the element is less than 97, or greater than 122, then it's not a lowercase letter from A through Z. It's something else. Let's push it straight through. And remember up here, we've set everything to down case. So any letter that's included in the string should be captured here. Next off, we want to say uh, else if the if I, so if, if the, the ordinal value plus the shift factor is greater than 122, which is uh, equal to lowercase z, then we have to do a little bit of uh, figuring out how we're going to manipulate that. 
because it's got to run past a again. So what I did here is I just defined x is equal to i, or the, the ordinal value, plus the shift value. And then y is equal to x minus 122. So what that's doing is getting the difference, and then you can apply that back to a. So what we do here is we say cipher order array, we're going to push to that array 96 plus that difference of y. And we start at 96 because if it was a difference of 1, we'd end up back on a. Whereas if you start at 97, you're going to actually be one uh, further ahead in the alphabet than you should be. Otherwise, if the ordinal value plus shift is less than 122, then we can just push the ordinal value plus shift to the cipher order array. So now the cipher order array is just an array of shifted ordinal values. And we're going to loop through that. So using a for loop, uh, and we're going to push to cipher array the character. So we're just converting these ordinal numbers back to characters and ending up with an array of these characters. And then down here, I just have some strings with string literals, which in the output in terminal, just show the logical progression. And you'll see that in a second. And at the very last one, we join that cipher array to turn it back into a complete string. Okay. So I have, for example, here, I've, I've called the cipher method and I've passed in the arguments, what a string, exclamation mark, five. So that's what you saw in the, uh, that's the same as what we have here, what a string five that they provide in the Odin project. So now let's run this in Ruby. So we're just gonna ask Ruby to load this file. Okay, and this is the output here. So if you can see in my method, I have all these puts lines, and that's what puts out here in the terminal. So it says your string is what a string. So that's what got passed into the method, which gets turned into an array. What, and the spaces are included in this array, what a string, they get carried forward. And this gets turned into ordinal numbers. And then these get shifted. <coughs> and then they finally get turned back into the new cipher string. Okay, and you can see the spaces and the exclamation mark got uh, conserved here. And then the final encrypted message is this code down here, which equals the one provided in the Odin project, just for a quick sanity check that it's doing what it should be doing. Okay, uh, the other way you could load this is in IRB, which is Interactive Ruby, and then you would just tell it to load cipher.rb. And Interactive Ruby is great because you can actually run Ruby straight in the console. So if you're trying to think of, uh, if, if, for example, if you want to see what a certain method is doing, or you just want to test out some logic, you can run that straight in your console as well. Okay, so it's fairly straightforward. I don't think there's too much more to add to that. And let's take a look at my slightly modified version that I created later on in the curriculum. So in the Ruby curriculum, we do get into testing and writing tests for your code. And one of the exercises is to go back to this particular Caesar cipher method and write a test for it. And in doing so, I had learned a few more things in Ruby and I had a bit more experience with it. So I kind of rewrite this, rewrote this method just to clean it up a little bit. And you can see here, I put it inside a class, which helps with testing. And I have a method encrypt with two parameters, string and shift, which is the same as the old one. But I did get rid of a couple of the arrays that I define up front. So instead of four arrays, I only have two in this, in this version. So I have an encrypted array, which is blank and for use later. And then I have an input array, which I make use of some of the Ruby methods to create. So I take the string, I convert to down case, I convert it to an array of letters, and then we run the map bang method on that, which transforms or mutates the original array and gives us the ordinal values or the ASCII code. And in this example, I actually subtracted my shift rather than adding it like the Odin example. So this logic is very similar, but slightly different. So all I'm saying or doing here is to the input array, let's do to each element if it's less than 97 or greater than 122, i.e. it's an exclamation mark or a pound sign, 
then let's push it straight to this encrypted array. Otherwise, if the no, if the nominal value or the ASCII code minus the shift is less than 97 or lowercase a, then we want to let x equal uh, the uh, the nominal value minus the shift, and then we're going to say y is equal to 97 minus x. And what that does is give us the residual difference that we then have to run past uh, z. So then we push to the encrypted array 123 minus that difference. So then we'll be just basically counting back from z, uh, lowercase z that is. Uh, otherwise, if neither of these conditions is met, then we just push straight to the encrypted ar uh, array, the nominal value minus the shift. And then all we do is we use the map bang on the encrypted to mutate this array of ordinal values and return the characters. And then we just join that array to provide a final output. So I, I don't, I'm not going to test this one. Uh, I have tested it in, in RSpec and I know that it, it is passing. I just wanted to show you that this was a different ra way to write it. I'm sure that some of you watching this probably have a much more elegant and efficient way of doing this as well. So I'd like to see that. Put your repository in the comments. And one thing I would note, I haven't actually talked about this yet, but on the Odin project there are tons of solutions that other um, students have put on for you to look at. And I highly recommend checking those solutions out. I've learned so much looking at the way other people do things, often far better than the way I do it, and it, it gives me some good ideas. Uh, the one caveat to that is definitely have a go at trying to solve the problem. And if you can't figure it out, go on the forum and see if you can get some help. You know, really try and work through it in your own mind before you look at solutions. You certainly don't want to be looking at solutions to get to the answer yourself. Uh, but anyway, uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments, and good luck with this one. It's a fun one again. Thanks. Bye-bye.